Well, one thing that's, I think, pretty cool about the HB Rex program is that um, a lot of the professors that offer HB Rex projects are professors that the Hambaya students have taken classes from during the year that have participated in the core. And so um, what you realize as, as uh, professors start talking about the HB Rex program is that you have, to, you have to go out there, ask questions, you have to show interest in the topics. And um, what makes the difference between you and the other applicants is not necessarily like your grade or, or something that can just be seen on your resume. You actually have to be a person that, that shows interest and that shows enthusiasm and that will be a, a good co-worker or a good uh, student, a good learner. And that, that's something that you can show by, uh, by interacting and not, it's not just something you can put on, on a piece of paper. One of the main things that I realized working in Rwanda in the clinic was the lack of maternal care. There really was. Um, I was living right next door to the maternity wing and so you would hear their screams and maybe not want to have children. <laughs> but it, it really, um, it, it was an eye-opening um, thing for me because there were very limited physicians and very limited painkillers and that wasn't on the top of the priority list. And what was interesting about working on the other side and working and really researching a lot of this um, and integrated health campaigns. First of all, what I thought was interesting, I had to give a presentation at the end to the um, global health team, and I really thought they were just testing me, and uh, all of these people were the experts on this subject, but there really isn't a lot of concentration on integrated health campaigns. If there's one thing that I care about, it's expanding access to care to to other people. My, my, my family, they're, 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 they're immigrants. They don't have health insurance. My grandmother had a tumor growing on the side of her head for two years and wasn't able to seek care because she didn't have insurance. So if there's one thing that I'm motivated by, it's just the fundamental belief that healthcare should be a human right. I was taking a class on minority health and it was taught by the director of the Office of Minority Health within the Department of Health and Human Services. And I took another class on international health and development. It was taught by a woman who is a consultant to the World Health Organization and who travels to over 100 countries a year helping governments and ministries of health um, figure out the best ways to organize their healthcare systems and um, the delivery of care. So you're, you get a chance to meet people that are actually out in the field being very active. So for me that was definitely one of the, probably the biggest highlight of my time in Humbaya was going to Stanford and Washington and I wanted to take it a step further, so I, I decided that I had learned a lot about the healthcare system in the United States through my classes and through my experiences in Washington, D.C. and at the Surgeon General's office, but I thought I'm also interested in understanding how other healthcare systems around the world um, are organized and function. And I knew that I wanted to take a lot of Chinese language uh, during my time at Stanford. And I had always sort of viewed this as a sort of thing I'd kept to the side of whatever my main academic concentration, which would have something to do with biology, would actually be. And then um, when I um, would begin exploring um, possible honors thesis projects, um, an opportunity came up to, um, to study the effects or to study cultural evolution um, in the context of childbearing pattern because in Chinese culture um, women leave the family um, traditionally at the age of marriage was 13, 14, 15 now we're um, looking in the early to mid 20s um, so women when I say women leave the family I mean that they they physically move to their husband's household and in with his parents um, and the children from that marriage will become part of the husband's family line um, so it's been described um, by many authors that um, raising a, a daughter in China is a effectively raising her for someone else. So it, there are no um, real benefits, I guess, to, um, to having a daughter in the same way that there are benefits to having a son. And so, of, of course, everybody, if you're only allowed to have one child under the one child policy, you want to make sure it's a boy. At the beginning of last summer, I went out with two graduate students and we were doing what I saw as this very sexy project looking at all of these dead aspen trees and as we were going around through these stands I began to realize that the very cut and dried picture that I had of how these aspen trees had died which was ultimately what we were researching was far less black and white than I had initially imagined and as we were in these aspen stands like measuring how big trees were and counting mortality and looking at, at funguses and different pathogens on these trees, I began to realize 
how complex of system uh, we were actually working in and how what we were doing that summer was actually just a very small kind of introduction project to looking at the big picture of what was really killing off these aspen trees. While there we got to develop our own independent research projects along with the work we were doing just as Carol's field assistants, gathering data for her. So that means we were in the field kind of on our own. Um, she helped us plan what we were going to do, but it was really our time to apply what we'd learned. And I can just remember being out there <laughs> trying to catch butterflies. She studies butterflies. So I have a six foot long pole with a net on it and I'm wandering around the mountains of Colorado <laughs> desperately trying to catch the right type of butterfly that I need. Um, and there was one time where it was kind of towards the end of the summer and it was I needed this certain type and I was getting frustrated. I sat down on a rock and I just looked around and I realized what I was doing and it just didn't seem to matter anymore. I just, it was just kind of a um, out of body experience. And then I got up and amazingly I, I caught that butterfly I needed right away once I had just taken a step back and realized what I was doing and where I was.